Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm gonna to be talking about Man of God. Man of God is a Nigerian drama that tells the story of Samwell, a man who forsakes religion so he can live life how he chooses at the cost of leaving his family behind. The movie briefly chronicles his harsh upbringing as a child before flashing forward to his adult life, making a living as a relatively successful singer. While everything is seemingly going well for him, Samwell finds himself caught between his ideal world and the faith he left behind, a fact made evident when he meets a woman named Joy, who he falls in love with and is inspired by to take up religion again, without realizing what the future has in store for him. This is the the first Nigerian film I've had the chance to see, and it was definitely an interesting experience. It tends to be all over the place with its story, but when it's focused, it does a good job at conveying its themes regarding faith and identity, as well as highlighting the struggles of its protagonist. Samwell is a very charismatic character, and he's quite humorous too, but despite these positive traits, there's an underlying sadness to his character, as if he's trying to fill in a gap that has been left open in his life, which ends up being religion. He tries to make up for his shortcomings with his faith later in life, but he never does it out of genuine devotion to God. It's always for a selfish reason, like pursuing a woman he's attracted to, or making some sort of profit out of it. He stays happy for the short term, but he always ends up being miserable in the long run. In a way, I like how the movie shows how messy his journey to rediscovering his faith was. It goes to show how unpredictable life can be, and Samwell is likable because he takes action and adapts to his circumstances, even if his circumstances are his fault. This being said, I felt that Samwell fell back into religion too quickly. As I mentioned earlier, the reason why it happens is because of a woman he falls in love with. Not enough time is given to properly digest Samuel's faith and idea of God. Perhaps this is to show how rash he is, but it still left his character rather shallow in this area. His main love interest Joy was a good character, even though she doesn't have a ton of screen time. She has to reconcile with her feelings for a man outside of religion, at least when she first meets him, which does add some dramatic intrigue. And the way these two build a relationship together is pretty adorable. Unfortunately, the movie starts to go a bit off the rails as the movie goes on. Once again, I thought that Samuel fell for Joy a bit too fast, or more that he was really upfront with her, which made certain scenes uncomfortable, and the dramatic intrigue between their different religious backgrounds isn't explored all that much. The romance gets even crazier as the movie jumps from one woman to the next. One second he's with Rekia, then all of a sudden he ditches her for Joy, before Joy moves away, and he's suddenly married to his best friend Teju now. I remember that scene where Samwell and Teju are in bed talking about their marriage, and I was like, wait, what? marriage. The movie has a hard time staying put in one place for too long, and again, this may sort of be the point in showing how unfocused Samwell is in his life, but the way the film is edited doesn't do him any favors. There's no visible indication of time passing, so when something significant does happen in the story, it's always jarring and never has any build-up toward it. Now, I will admit that it is pretty funny to see Samwell juggle all of this romantic chaos at times. He's forced to lie and come up with one excuse after another so that he can accomplish his desires. Even though I knew what he was doing was going to come back to bite him eventually, I was impressed with how much creativity the filmmakers put behind his BS. The movie does a surprisingly good job at balancing the lighthearted energy with dark topics, and a lot of this is thanks to its musical set pieces. Not only are they entertaining and colorful, but they also reflect the change that Samwell goes through, as they go from being loud and flamboyant to more quiet and conservative as he immerses himself in his faith again. The soundtrack in general adds to the uplifting tone that the movie has. Even when Samwell is involved in something dramatic or nefarious, there's usually some sort of silver lining attached to it, implying that Samwell will find his way back on the true path toward God at some point. The theme of identity comes up often. Samwell constantly finds himself pretending to be something that he's not. Even though he's married, he cheats. Even though he makes an honest living, he still engages in criminal behavior. He's so fixated on what he wants that he never considers others' feelings. This ties into his need to be true to himself, even though what he's doing clearly isn't working as intended, because if it did, he would be making other people in his life happy too. It was interesting to see him struggle through a variety of dramatic events in his life to understand how he should devote himself to God, and it makes sense because he's spent so much time away from religion. Unfortunately, as with the romance from earlier, the movie gets way out of hand with the drama as things proceed. Between all of the affairs that Samuel engages in, constant brief talks about drug runs with Rekia, and some random woman getting pregnant and dying in the middle of it all, things move too fast for the viewer to process everything at once. And again, the editing leaves out significant gaps of time that make it even more confusing to follow along with 
what happens. For example, when Joy moves away, Samuel asks a pastor about her whereabouts, and the pastor says that he'll look into it. Almost immediately after, Samuel approaches the pastor about why it's taking so long to hear anything back. While a large amount of time seems to have passed in the movie itself, for the audience it's only been seconds. This is just one of many examples of narrative distance that occurs in the movie, and it ruins immersion. So many different subplots are rushed through for the sake of added drama that it never amounts to a cohesive whole, which is disappointing. And that's not to say that all of the drama is bad per se, it just needs to focus on the things that are more important. One thing I like that I wish the movie spent more time on was the relationship Samwell had with his family. It's clear that he resents his father for the beatings he inflicted on him, and that as much as he loves his mother and brother, he cannot go back to face them as long as his father is there. The abuse he's received is presented in unapologetic fashion, and it's shown right at the beginning of the story. This helps the audience to become attached to his well-being, and to understand why he has so much trouble fully reconciling with his faith. I really wish we got to see more of his family later on, because every scene they were in was fantastic. All of them miss having Samuel in their lives, but they have conflicting views with how they're handling his absence, which adds more nuance to the religious themes. This angle was much more interesting than all of the crazy drama that ramps up later on. The movie does start to regain focus as it leads toward the final act. Samuel's path to destruction, which is hinted at at the beginning, starts to take shape, and it manages to build tension leading toward this downward spiral. It still gets bogged down in unexplained events with no prior setup, but at least ends on a definitive note. Overall, Man of God is an average quality drama that does a decent job at exploring the main character's journey toward rediscovering his faith, but its numerous romance and drama subplots tend to muddle its messages. If you like faith-oriented dramas and you don't mind watching one whose story is all over the place, you might enjoy checking this one out. Although I wish that its story was less scattered and more focused, I did enjoy watching it in the end. With this being my first foray into Nigerian cinema, I'm excited to see what Nollywood has in store for the future. What did you think about this movie? Were you able to empathize with Samwell's plight, or was the story too confusing for you to follow along with? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Man of God. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the Italian crime film, The Turning Point. Bye bye!